Good evening, everybody. I'm so pleased to be hanging out with you online tonight. My name is Tim, and I'm part of the Limitless team. And as Laura told us earlier, tonight is all about exploring together what it means to be a follower of the way of Jesus. Now, I don't know if you've been watching The Mandalorian on Disney+. Plus. But if you haven't, I mean, what have you been doing, doing during lockdown? You need to get on it, friends. But for the uninitiated amongst us, for those who have not yet ventured into the Mandalorian, our protagonist of the story is called Mando. And Mando, he's a, a bounty hunter who travels the galaxy hunting criminals and, and claiming payment upon their capture. And Mando is part of this people group, this, this tribe, this collective, this society of people called, you guessed it, the Mandalorians. And, and it quickly becomes apparent in the story that this, that this clan, this, this tribe, this group of people, they, they have a mantra, a, a guiding statement that they repeat often to one another and by which they live. And they say, this is the way. This is the way. Hey, Mando, why is it that you never take your helmet off? This is the way. Hey, Mando, how is it that you, that you live differently to, to everybody else in the culture around you? This is the way. In other words, this community they call the Mandalorians has a way of living, a, a set of rituals, customs, practices, and beliefs that are different to everybody else in the surrounding culture. They are followers of a different way. Well, did you know that before Christians were ever called Christians, they were first called followers of the way. And we know this from the scripture. One early Jesus follower called Paul said this. He said, the, I worship the God of our ancestors as a follower of the way. And as a group of people, these early believers were described as people belonging to the way. So, so these early Christians, before they were ever called Christians, were first called followers of the way. Because just like the Mandalorians, this was a community of people who had a way of living. Yes, a set of rituals, customs, practices, and beliefs that was different to everyone else in the surrounding culture. They lived different. They loved different. They believed different. They behaved different. And so they were called followers of the way. And this reality, this truth reminds us tonight of something really, really important. You see, sometimes you and I, we make the mistake of thinking that being a Christian is all about what we believe. But that's only part of the story. Because you see, to be a Christian isn't just to believe in Jesus, it's to follow the way of Jesus. Here's how Jesus himself said it. He said it like this. The student is not above the teacher, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. But if we were all together in the same room tonight, I would get you all to shout out, be like. Maybe, and you know what? Well, I'm going to get the crew on the cameras and the band to shout out, be like. Everyone who is fully trained would be like their teacher. The student is not above their teacher, said Jesus, but everyone who is fully trained will be like their teacher. Jesus is telling us that, that to be a Christian is to be an apprentice. It's to be a student, to be a disciple, to be, to be a learner, or if you are a Star Wars fan, to be a, a, a Padawan of Jesus. Because this is what followers of the way do. This is what Christians do. We learn to become like. We learn to be like our teacher. We are imitators of Christ. We, we are seeking to be continually transformed into his likeness. We are learning to think like Jesus, to act like Jesus, to live like Jesus, to be like Jesus. Because to be a Christian isn't just to believe in Jesus. It's to follow the way of Jesus. We are followers of the way. So here's another way that you can think about it. There's this really... Uh, old movie uh, called Austin Powers, International 
man of mystery. It's, it's kind of rude, uh, but also kind of hilarious. Just don't tell your parents I said that. And um, the, the villain of this movie goes by the name of Dr. Evil, okay? And Dr. Evil, uh, in the second movie in the Austin Powers series, he hatches this evil plan, this this wicked scheme, uh, where he decides to clone himself. He, he, He thinks to himself, you know, I can be that much more evil and villainous and successful in my wicked plan to take over the world if there are two of me, right? Uh, But the cloning goes a a, a little bit wrong, not quite how he imagined it would go. And so as he reveals his clone uh, to his room full of like evil henchmen, he, he, he welcomes him into the room and he says this. He says, he is exactly like me in every way except one-eighth my size. <laughs> and because, because this evil clone is exactly like him in every way but one-eighth his size, Dr. Evil decides that he is going to call him Mini-Me. All right, <laughs> Mini-Me. He says, you look like me, uh, you think like me, you act like me, you are a little version of me. Well, friends, did you know that the word Christian itself actually means little Christ's. It, it, so, so to be a Christian then, it's kind of like to be a mini-me, not of Dr. Evil, thankfully, uh, but to be a mini-me of Jesus. That's what the word itself means. It means that, you know, kind of like mini-me, we are seeking to become exactly like Jesus in every way. In other words, I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. And friends, if you only remember one thing from tonight, I want it to be this, that I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. You know, if I'm a Christian, if I'm a follower of the way, it means I'm learning to, to think like Jesus, to act like Jesus, to love like Jesus, believe like Jesus, behave like Jesus, to be like Jesus, because I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. Why don't you all write that sentence into the chat right now so that I know that you've got it while I, while I show you how another early follower of the way called John describes this principle. He, he says this, John says, we know, you and I know, that we have come to know him, that we have come to know God if, well this is interesting, what's John going to say? We, we know that we've come to know, know God if we believe in him? That's not what he says. He says, we know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. How do we know that we're in him, John? How do we know if we're in relationship with God? This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. If I claim to be a follower of the way, says John, then I must live as Jesus did. Why? Because I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. See, if I am following, if I am following it means that somebody else is determining my direction, that somebody else is determining my pathway, guiding and leading my steps. So if I'm following Jesus, then it means that I have surrendered my own right to be in charge of my life and submitted myself completely to him. It means that I follow his way in in how I use my money. I follow his way in how I express my sexuality. I follow his way in in how I treat my parents and how I conduct my relationships, in how I determine my priorities, in how I form my character. If I follow his way, it means that my worldview is shaped by scripture and not by culture. Or I want to say that to you one more time. If I am a follower of the way, it means that my worldview is shaped by scripture and not by culture. It means that my values are shaped by his teachings, not by the media. Because I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. And friends, this is why, I'm not going to lie to you tonight. This is why the Jesus way is not the easy way. I can't tell you that. 
because Jesus never told you that. Actually, the Jesus way, it, it's the hard way. Why is it the hard way? Because it's the way of the minority. It's the way of the few. And, and listen, if you're trying to be a follower of the way of Jesus at school, you already know this. I'm not telling you anything new. If, you, if you're trying to follow Jesus at school, you, you, you know that following Jesus means living different, acting different, believing different to the people around you. It, it, it means just like those Mandalorians back at, back at the start, that you, you follow a different way. You live by a different creed, by a different code. It means that some of the things that you stand for will be considered as unacceptable by the people around you. Now, I tell you, you can't believe that. You can't say that. You can't think like that. But here's the thing. You know what? Jesus never pretended it would be anything otherwise. You, you know, one, one warning he actually gave to some of those early followers of the way was this. He said to them, you will be hated by everyone because of me. And so all of this begs the question, if it's not the easy way and it's the hard way, if it's the way of the minority, it's the way of the few, why would we do it? Why would we follow the way of Jesus if it's the hard way? Well, because of something else that Jesus famously said. He said this, I am the way. I am the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. You see, I want to tell you, friends, that, that, that following the way of Jesus, I wish, aha, I wish that I could be with you and I could look you in the eye right now because I want you to know that following the way of Jesus is undoubtedly the hard way, but it is the way that leads to truth and it is the way that leads to life. You, you, you know, I've found in my years of following Jesus that the, the, the closer I get to living out the way of Jesus, the more alive I become in my spirit. I, I found that the, the more I learn to live out the practices of the way of Jesus, e even when they're so countercultural and the people around me just don't understand them, you know, the more peace I have in my mind the more joy I have in the depths of my spirit, that the more content I feel, even in really difficult moments like we're experiencing right now, the more I follow the way of Jesus, the more alive I become. And so friends, I am absolutely convinced of this, that though the way of Jesus is not the common way of our culture, it is the best way. That, that though, though the way of Jesus is not the easy way, it is the only way by which humanity can find the fullness and richness of life that we were designed to experience. The life for which we created, it's the only way. And friends, that is why I am called to be who Jesus would be if Jesus were me. And so right now, one more time, I'm going to ask us to watch that video of some young people talking about what it means to be a follower of the way of Jesus. I want you to listen to the words really carefully and decide if you're up for following his way as well. We are the followers of the way. We are not like you. We are called to be different. We do not fit in. We were made to stand out. We live by different standards. We align with a different person. We follow a different leader. And we walk by a different road. We believe in one way, one truth, one life. We are the quiet revolution. We are the counterculture. Are the research at minority. We are the followers of the way. In this way, the least of the greatest. The righteous are satisfied and the meek inherit the earth. In this way, those who mourn shall be comforted, the humble will be elevated, and the pure shall see God. Our fight is for love, truth, justice, and peace. Our enemy is poverty, pollution, racism, and bullying. Our weapons are grace, kindness, patience, and gentleness. And our victory, and our victory, and our victory. Our victory is the broken being restored, the hurting being healed, the lonely finding community, and the poor finding provision. Our victory is the anxious finding peace, the hopeless finding hope, the addicted being set free, and the lost being found. Yes. 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 Our way is life. 
and life to the free. We are the followers of the way. Whose way? Jesus' way. The way that leads to truth. The way that leads to life. We are the followers of the way. And together, we are limitless. I mean, I don't know about you, but that's how I want to live my life. I want to be a follower of the way of Jesus. And it's all very inspiring, isn't it, to to watch that video and see those young people make make that declaration. But here's the thing, we're not going to become those kinds of people by accident. In fact, we're not even going to become those kinds of followers of the way of Jesus simply because we desire to or because we want to. No, we learn to become like Jesus only by adopting the practices and the disciplines and the exercises that he followed. Practices like uh, silence and solitude and fasting and prayer, simplicity, generosity, Sabbath, Scripture. See, our only pathway to becoming like Jesus is by following the way of Jesus. Jesus.